everybody! Since you may have missed my NaNoWriMo boot camp, and NaNoWriMo is getting closer and closer, you might be interested in my how to prepare for NaNoWriMo at the very last minute, which will be October 30th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. You can prep an awful lot for it, and you can do it at the last minute. I'll tell you how to do that if you check me out at speakeasy.com. The link will be in the show notes. But I've only got 50,000 words to go before the end of NaNoWriMo. Lately, I have had to remind myself that it's best to keep your eyes on your own paper in several ways. This is I Should Be Writing, Season 17, Episode 69. Nice. Well, I should be writing. So hi there, welcome to I Should Be Writing. This is the podcast for wannabe fiction writers and I am your host, Mer Lafferty. I stream live on Twitch, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. And then I edit them and put them in the feed. The RSS feed where you can subscribe however you like. Although Apple's trying to get us away from using the word subscribe because even after being around since 2004, people still think that subscribe means they have to pay for something. No, it just means it comes to your door or your podcatcher or whatever. So, um, yeah, I, re I recently did not get a bunch of audio editing done until one big hunk of time last week. And so I apologize, but everybody should have gotten a lot of podcasts this past weekend. There were two ditch diggers and four I should be writings. Yeah, good times. But usually start by saying what I've been up to, and I am trying to clear my desk of outstanding projects to work on this new one that I can't talk about. And which means I'm being a little productive. I got my uh, book two outline turned in and approved yesterday, which is cool. And I can start putting that into my schedule. And I also need to work on uh, copy edits to book one. So nothing, I mean, nothing terribly exciting that I can talk about, but at least I am getting things done. Um, I, well, I'll talk about this later. Yeah, I'll talk about that later in the podcast. So, um, as for good news... Nothing bad has really happened to me this weekend, <laughs> or this week. <laughs> and I know that sounds kind of silly, but it's been a rough couple of months with uh, very, not, not constant stress, but occasional punches in the face kind of thing. And uh, yeah, so this week's going pretty well so far, I'd say. And if something did go wrong, then I am proud of myself for absolutely forgetting about it. Unless somebody's like bleeding on a on the street somewhere and I need to go take care of them. But that's not really my thing. I, not really an EMT. I got way, way off on a tangent there. But if y'all have any good news, I would love to hear it. Whether your good news is writing related or not, whether it's acceptance related or not. I want to hear what you're doing in your projects and your life. To make people happy. Because I got the yay button fixed. And I'm going to use it. Look out. I leave fictional characters bleeding in alleyways all the time. So is that your is that your problem with um, like loot, like dangling plot points and loose strings and all that? It's just you just bloody up a character, dump them in an alley, and then move on with the story? I'm wondering... Uh, Kit says, finished a short 4,600-word story to throw into an anthology slush pile. 
Well done. That is something right there. And Crafter assembled my first Warhammer army. And Kay Kimmy turns 40 this week and is mostly okay with that. Those are both fantastic. Yeah, one thing they don't tell you, because I don't think they might hear it, is that, you know, the older you get, a lot of times things get a lot better. And sure, age takes its toll on you. And so physically you may not look the way you want or move the way you want but you know there's the confidence that comes with experience and the uh, do not give a flip what other people think about you so much it's it's nice aging is kind of nice it's got its point it's got its high points so happy birthday K Kimmy you enter 40 your 40s like a warrior I don't know how warriors age but that's on you to look it up I got stuff to do. If anybody else has any good news, and if you listening later have good news that you would like me to mention on the show, just let me know. Put good news in the su in the uh, subject line, and I will read it on my next recording. Wow. Jackaroth, welcome first. Second... My daughter is finally mature enough to write a bad guy that doesn't have poop or fart-based powers. That, that's a rite of passage right there. I'm very impressed. So, well done, daughter. <laughs> Speaking of daughter, Numbers Ninja has revealed that they have a birthday this week. I wasn't going to say anything because I didn't know if you wanted it. But, yes, Numbers Ninja is having a birthday in a couple of days. And, uh, I'm pretty sure they've been, had a lot more, um, maturity and res restraint than I would in that we sent the, we sent a box and said, you have to open part of it now and then don't go below this part in your excavation. And I assume they did. Is that right? Did you? Because you're really good at that. Happy birthday to those with birthdays this week. Yes, yes, I have not excavated the whole box. That's just very impressive. I don't know how you do it. So, uh, yes, I sent them some live plants that I did not think should sit there in a dark box wrapped in bubble wrap for a full week. So, uh, they had to excavate those and, and rescue and all that. So. Anyway, that is our good news portion. If you come up with good news later, just tell me. I am not draconian with how this show is uh, formatted. Not at all. But this is one of those episodes where I have, in order to talk, I have to address some not, <laughs> some feelings I'm not proud of. But I always try to be, I always try to show a lot of stuff to you guys so you know that you're not alone and if that has to do with my mistakes or feeling not like the good charitable person I hope to be it's it's yeah hey preemie all my writing related feels are feels I am not proud of not gonna lie I understand and I appreciate you saying that but I guess, I guess this is kind of good news, but um, I have a big problem with FOMO. Big. I mean, it's, it's huge. And when I see bands like The Garages put out such amazing music, and they have all sorts of people from all over the world at all different levels of making music, I think, well, I play the violin a little bit. I could do that. And when I see people do Inktober or Blaseballtober or Blaistober, I don't know what they're calling it, but some people are doing one Blaseball piece of art every day. Or Bottober from um, the AI Weirdness woman. I think, well, I've always wanted to draw too. And let me just do it aside here. 
One thing about your 40s is that you will understand that some things will never come to you. And this is not giving up. This is realizing that your brain works one way and it's not going to work another way. And that is me. I don't think with visual description. I, I, I can picture things. I've heard there are people who can't actually can't picture things. I can picture things, but it's often a very... Like, I usually don't picture a big, fancy, fully stocked with furniture room. Fully furnished room. I'll, like, imagine two people in the room and I'll kind of know what they look like. I don't think visually. And since I know that about my writing, I'm able to look at my books on edits and think, okay, so this looks like two people are talking, two, ha two heads are talking in a, in a white room. Let's, let's fix that. But when you don't think visually, it's really, really hard to do art. <laughs> it's really, really hard. So, uh, but it's like this, this FOMO of, I, I want to be a musician and I want to be an artist and I want to be a writer. And I'm already a writer and I can, I can do that. I, I admire the hell out of people who can do more than one thing. Well, I just, wait, I can't tell that story yet. Dang it. Anyway, I was, I, I was talking to Preemie and a couple of other people this weekend and suddenly realized that I was the only non-scientist in the group. That felt weird. But something weird happened recently. I've told about my, um, crap. I think it was Preemie who made a, uh, a pun out of it. My, my, my sudden opportunity, whatever Preemie said it was cleverer than me. Um, I signed the contract yesterday. We're doing stuff. I mean, I gotta get to work making stuff. I'm excited. Once that came through, I felt like I could stand back and admire the stuff other people do. And I've been trying to unpack that because I think I lost a lot of confidence, a lot of confidence this year and last year. I, you know, when you work with an editor, you're going to feel like you're going to have the suspicion that other people send say 90% perfection when they turn in their drafts and you are of the 10% that has to go back and forth and back and forth and everything sucks and you're terrible. I know that's not true, but that's what it feels like. That was happening to me for two projects. This, this and last year just could not get it right. And it was really, really wearing on me. But when this new project came along and I got my outline approved and the final drafts finally did get approved for both projects. I started, I felt less of the FOMO of wanting to play with in other people's sandboxes. Cause I think I subconsciously thought that I was being pushed out of my sandbox. And if I don't get to write, then what am I going to do? I got, I got one thing I do well and that's writing. So if I don't have that, what the hell do I have? And I know that's ridiculous. If all of my contracts got canceled tomorrow, I could still write and publish myself. It's not, that's not the thing. But getting this job and the, I haven't got a lot of comments on the Godmaker race. And I suppose that makes sense because it's not, it's a different kind of storytelling. I have loved a lot of uh, races I've run or stories I've listened to over at Zombies Run and I've never told the authors, which I should have, but, uh, I don't expect a lot of people to mention it, but one person really did on Twitter and I really appreciated that. But, um, the head of the company said that, that they were very happy with it and they were, um, the people were responding well to it. And then I got offered this opportunity and I hate to say that external validation helps, but the external validation did help in that I can feel a little bit more solid where I'm standing right now. And it just reminds me that, that while it is good, I'm not saying don't try new things. Not at all. I'm not saying that 
you'll never learn anything. But I'm saying that sometimes if you are looking into another, looking at somebody else's paper, to use the metaphor I named this podcast after, sometimes when you do that, you need to look at what is wrong with your own paper. What, what, is, what is not fulfilling you over here? Now, if I had been able to go back in time and tell myself this, say, three months ago, I don't know what I could have told her to do to stop feeling that way. But it's a matter of having confidence in what you can do. And I talked about this a while back. In that my my mantra was uh, show up this year because I have confidence that I can write and sometimes especially when you're going back and forth on a lot of edits the hardest thing to do is go and sit down and open the file and look at it that's the hardest part after you get through that you can probably handle it but in showing up I, that, that's actually me stating that I'm confident that I can handle, um, whatever weird plot point my mind throws at me or whatever edit, editing job my editors throws at me. As long as I just give myself the chance to sit down and do it. So... Yeah. It's been weird. I mean, I, I just love... I, I picked up the violin. That was my... I, I joked that was my midlife crisis. I just suddenly decided I was going to learn a very difficult instrument. Oh, God. Why did I do that? But it, it, it's because there really isn't another instrument that moves me the way violin does. You know, that, that physical response of, oh, my God, this is amazing kind of thing. That's almost always with violins. So that's why I wanted to learn how to do it. And I'm happiest when I'm just playing and practicing and, and having my lesson. I'm not trying to imp impress anybody. I'm not trying to write music myself. God, I'm not. I'm just... That's a me thing. That's for me. That's not for me to perform and therefore get anxious about. Considering the performance anxiety I feel with one person, my teacher, I really can't imagine I could get on stage anyway. But when I remember that I can do that and enjoy that, that's, I feel more, I feel more centered. And, you know, I can look at Numbers Ninja's art. I'll go ahead and be a proud mom. I don't care. I'll look at Numbers Ninja's art and be so happy that they can think of these amazing things. And, you know, if you want me to write a story based on a piece of art, I can do that. That's how my dad got me to start writing. Remember those Time Life books? Everybody over 40, you don't have to uh, remind, don't have to date yourself, but the Time Life books are, they were big uh, TV sales. Things that were selling on TV back in the 80s. And we bought a, a set of the science fiction ones or fantasy ones. I don't even remember what they were. I just remember looking through and seeing these amazing pictures of dragons. And my father used to challenge me by telling me to write a story about various pictures he found. So, um... I got to figure out how to keep that confidence because I would really like to not need external validation. But sometimes apparently I still do. And there are other things I've been trying to figure out how to talk about this. And I think I need to be extremely vague because I I don't want to be an, one of the ugly people who just shows their ass, you know, like 
like Premi said, a lot of my feelings are, are negative. It's, um, I'm just going to say that there's probably always going to be something that, that sticks at you, like a scratchy tag and not even like, not something huge, like, uh, a rejection or a bad review or something like that, but you just see something and you just are angry because of what that is and who approved it and possibly why didn't they approve it for me and things like that. And it's going to happen. And you just got to move on because it happens to everybody. And I'm sorry, I can't be more specific, but if I am, I'll look really mean. Just saying that I saw something, it made me a little bit angry. And again, I'm trying, I'm this, this, bringing this back to the topic, which is eyes on your own paper. I don't care what any other author does. I don't care how their publisher supports them. It really has to do with me and my work and my experience. So I'm going to try to grow up. Not complaining about it directly is one way I can grow up. Not saying, not saying it in any way is even better, but I'm actually doing this as a learning thing, saying that you'll feel these feelings. You're going to feel them. And you're going to want to say something terrible. And what you do is you get a friend. And you tell that friend, I'm feeling mean and bad right now, and here's why. And if the friend knows you, they're going to think, that sucks, I'm sorry. And then you will have gotten sympathy. But if you go out on the social medias, on the Twitters and the Facebooks and say something, that is not good. Yes. Thank you, Crafter. Feelings are valid. It's how you react that marks you who marks who you are. Exactly. The Twitter timeline is not the place for all the feels. Exactly, Preemie. You need a vent friend. Social media is not a good vent friend. No. <clears throat> so I'm going to end the podcast right here. If you would like to continue the discussion, you can either catch me live 3 p.m. Eastern Time, Tuesdays and Thursdays, or you can uh, listen to the entire episode because I offer the expanded episode to Patreon supporters. So you can get that at patreon.com slash mighty And my website is merverse.com and... I'm found all over the place. Twitch.tv slash Mighty Mer. If you Google me, you'll find it. I, that's, that's, you know, I never, ha never find my name on keychains, but I'm very Googleable. So that's what you say when you got a rare name. You'll never get a keychain, but it will be easy to find online if you want to be. Anyway, thanks everybody for, uh, your support and listening to my sometimes not ah, the most charitable things or the, the most calm stream. I'm throwing pens around. And I'll see you Thursday and we'll talk about NaNoWriMo again because it's coming. And you should be writing. I Should Be Writing is available to you under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives license. Theme music by John Anilio. Art by Numbers Ninja. Production by Summer Brooks and hosting by Libsyn. Find all of this information and more at merverse.com. And remember, we can't do this without you. Thanks for your support. Doctor Who. Yeah, I'm sitting home watching Doctor Who.